So, um, hello everybody, and welcome to another Power BI um, platform learning community session. So today, our guest speaker is Paul, and is going to be taking us on text analysis using Power BI and Twitter. So the Power BI learning community is currently being sponsored by Enterprise DNA, and Enterprise DNA is a platform where you can learn all about Power BI and how you can use it to analyze data. The Power BI learning community is also being powered by your business. And your business is a registered Microsoft, Excel, financial modeling, business intelligence, data analysis, enterprise solution firm in Nigeria, and they specialize in helping you be on top of your business data. So these are the upcoming training calendar where you can learn all about Power BI and Power BI, financial modeling, and Microsoft Excel, and how to use big data. So um, today's guest speaker is Paul. Um, Paul is a data analyst with a background in digital marketing and statistics. He also believes in how to use, how you can leverage your social media um, using data you get from your social, from various social platforms to achieve your business goals. So hello, Paul. Hello. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. How are you doing? Okay. So we're good to go. Yeah. Yeah, good to go. You can share your screen. Awesome. Hi, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to today's session. Um, so we're going to be talking about you know, Twitter analysis with Power BI. Yes. Yeah. So just give me minutes. Yes, we are good to go. So I don't know how many of us have seen like some of the recent analysis I've done. I'm just interested in like social media. It's my niche. So I'm majorly interested in like social media conversations and social media trends. So I just look for okay, how Power BI to the work I do every day. So that was one thing that led me to start using Power BI to do like some of my Twitter analysis. And so um, a lot of people have also been asking, um, how do you do this? How do you do that? I hope I can answer a lot of these questions within the time we have today. So let's go right into it. So today's session is going to be demonstrative. Um, I'll be sharing my Power BI screen and we'll just use a sample data that I got. So let's proceed. Yeah. So I think the, the first step is always like getting the data. So when people say, oh, where do you get your data from? How do you get your data? So these are the different ways we can get data. First, if you are familiar with Python, there's this um, library called Twippy. So I think they, they have like different libraries you can also use to get data. But that will require you to have a Twitter developer account. So it depends on what you are using the data for. Like the Twitter developer account, I think it has um, for researchers. I think they have for businesses too. So they have different classes. So for people that are just learning, I think it's always best if you just go for the academic you know, routes. So apply for a developer, get your developer access, and you can also use these tools in Python to get tweets. Then another way you can get data is from Twitter partners. So you have the likes of Brandwatch, Meltwater, Talkwalker, and the like. So you can get um, Twitter data from these organizations. So they have partnered with Twitter. They are Twitter official partners. They are more, not just these three. These three are just examples. They are more, and um, you can always like go through their sites, check their plans, and subscribe to any of their plans. There you can get Twitter data for anything you want. Then Twitter itself has this um, 
historical power truck api yeah you can like get data directly from twitter so at let's see at the premium though so if you wish to go back like five years ten years to get data regarding a particular thing you can go through that route to acquire your twitter data so those are the ways you can get data and why twitter i think uh, twitter is like the home of like basically social media conversations so unlike other um, image based platforms popular platforms like instagram um, Facebook, we see more texts, like more opinions on Twitter. And the way it is being curated using hashtags and other keywords is very easy. Like, it makes sense for you to just choose Twitter, Twitter data to like, okay, feel what people are saying about a particular thing, about a particular brand, or any other trend they just want to analyze. So that's, that's why most people choose Twitter. Um, so like the major thing now is once you've gotten that data, you have to clean the data. Um, I don't know how many of us like use Twitter like, very well. Trust me, once you get Twitter data, you have to clean the data. You have to make sure that the data is as clean as much as possible. You might not, it might not be clean, like 100% clean, but like a very high percentage, like the margin of error should be just um, very low because you wouldn't want a situation where you've done, you, you've just gotten the data, you just did the analysis without considering, like I said, spam. Consider the possibility of spam when analyzing the data. Um, definitely, if you see a trending keyword, um, people like vendors who want to latch onto the keywords and sell their goods and services, or just put it in their tweets to make it like go viral or for more visibility. So we have a lot of that. So you might find out that you're having data where um, a lot of people are just spamming. Imagine um, if you just check any trend, you see people like attaching pictures of cars they are selling, sneakers and the like, selling to DM them, like nothing you know, related to the keyword you want to actually study. So imagine once you have so much of that in your data, <clears throat> sometimes it skews your analysis sometimes so it's also important that you just like look out for spam and the different ways you can clean data you can clean data with excel like it's just you isolating the data you don't want to see let's say you want to just see two days um, data for the first two days or one week or one month you can restrict you can filter by dates like transform your data. So you can do that in Excel, you can do that in Power BI or Power Query, you can do that with Google Sheets. So I, I think <clears throat> I use Google Sheet most times to just like have an overview of the data, I just scroll down and just like look at random samples and say, oh, does this thing need thorough cleaning? But it depends. If you're having data of like 2,000 rows, 2,000 rows, 5,000 rows, 10,000, and the likes. Yes, it's easier, but when you are having data that is going into 500,000 rows, I think that would be too large. You can't easily just skim through the data. But I, I have a friend, his name is Simi, and Simi did something interesting. I think he created something with another package entirely, with another app entirely, that can solve that problem. So if you are someone that deals with like large um, social media data, you can always reach out to me. I can put you in touch with him. He has a solution that works best. For example, when we were working on um, BB Ninja data, so you can imagine the volume of BB Ninja data. BB Ninja data, you, you can't be getting um, 10,000 tweets. You are looking at hundreds of thousands and the likes. <clears throat> so you need an efficient system to clean this data. But in case you need that, I can put you in touch with him. So I think that's the end of this very short presentation. Like I said, we are demonstrating live, so we are going straight to Power BI. And our data today is, um, so we are looking at Black Bones Crusade. This is just a sample um, of our data. 
and please uh, if you're following please in the chat section please let me let me know if you're following if i'm too fast um any question just put in this chat section i'll be looking at them yeah so for today's live presentation we want to look at the hashtag um black bones crusade and we want to like analyze it and like actually see what's going on now twitter analysis have like so much potential you can use it for brands you can use it for business you can use it to study trends you can use it for competitor analysis you can use it for a whole lot a whole range so it's 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 just um power bi is just like one of the tools to achieving whatever objective you've already set out okay say on twitter i want to look at so 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 and so so we are just using power bi to like see if we can actually um, get sorry. it oh, yeah a question. so i was asking if you could share the data uh, is it like you want to i don't know you said so i was asking if you data if to if you could share the data or this data this this um, data this uh, okay okay um can can that wait after the class like i can send it to you i don't know if it's like important now because it will require me to like close a lot of things or can i forward that to your to your telegram maybe you help me upload it somewhere is that possible yeah. yes so you could just share the link and they could download it i don't know if that helps you wish give oh. a a view access link okay okay just send it to me on telegram old Okay, yep. So um here we yeah, so we are looking at like black bones crusade, right? So I think we have a total of let's see about four thousand something, four thousand something tweets, right? Yeah. So now the the way the way the data is collected is um there are different ways, there are different forms. So I just have the IDs. Uh, I'm sorry, this particular data, I think I would share it after the session. Please um, bear with me because of some, you know, privacy reasons. I hope you don't mind. Yes, that's OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to, I have to, to share it. So it's very important, like when dealing with data like this, you also have to also consider like some form of privacy, even though, yes, we agree that Twitter data is a public data, but we try as much as possible to respect um, privacy. So um, we have about 5,000 rules, and now this is the text. Like I said, different how you get the data or what you actually call out for, because if you are using something like Twippy, you might just say, okay, I'm interested in just getting the tweets alone and the time, right? So you might say, some will tell you, okay, I want the retweets, I want both the tweets and retweets. Some will just say, okay, I want only original tweets, right? So for me, I, I just, I like got as much as possible, like everything I need. So now, See that is 5,000 rules is something I can easily skim through and just be like, OK, do I see a batch of like um, spam texts? Now, basically, how you even like one pattern I've seen is most of these spam texts, they, they try as much as possible to use multiple hashtags, multiple keywords that are trending around the same period. Uh, we might stumble across one like very soon. Um, OK. I think this is kind of spam, possibly, but we can't, we can't just judge. Okay, look at this, right? So this one is saying, thank you, everything, blah, blah, say, you know, look away, blah, blah, this video is dash. So it's actually promoting a video and um, it's tagging on the, the likes. So you have, multiple hashtags that is not even related to black bones events that's like a sign so if like i said you you must make try as much as possible to like reduce 
spam. You can't get everything like 100%, but make sure like that the, 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 the percentage of spam in the data is like very, very low. So one out of let's say like close to 5,000 tweets will not really, you know, affect your data. But when you're seeing like large swaths of, you know, spam, like large batches. So imagine all this now, like all this you're seeing here right now, filled with spam messages. You know that, yes, you definitely have to clean them. So I can like run the cleaning down here, use filter and like use the do not contain. But I can also do that in Power BI too. So let's import our data in Power BI. Is a CSV data. So downloads. Downloads. So one one other thing I I would advise because this is like based on experiences how I work, like things I come across, I try as much as possible to ensure that people don't make the same mistakes, right? Um, you see this um, file origin, please, especially if you're working with CSV files, most times once you import it, it tends to take on another file origin. Now, how will this affect? When you read, when it reads the file, like some symbols, I don't know if you can see this particular symbol here. Sorry, is my screen too small? No, 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 everything is yeah. okay. We are fine. So you can see some particular symbols here, like because of this file origin, please look out for this file origin, the Unicode UTF-8, like it translates the, the symbols, like you can actually see the symbols and it, um, the punctuation marks. So you don't want a situation where you are seeing like weird, kind of text, like the format of the text is just somehow because you are using the wrong file origin. So this is like very critical, like I stumbled across it one day and these are some things that you don't really see. So it's important to use the Unicode UTF-8 to get like the right um, lettering. So we want to transform our data. Um, Pardon me, Power Query is opening another window. Let me bring it here. Okay, can you see my Power Query? Yes. Awesome. So here we do a lot of um, transformation. We do a lot of transformation. One thing I, I want to show is my tweets, but I want to just save my so it's by time, so I have to make sure that the format is correct. So look for how to extract the dates, the time, and any other important thing that we might need to see. But first, I'm concerned about the text. So we have different kind of tweets. You know, like the way you have quoted tweets, you have replies, you have the likes. So you can see this with, uh, Twitter has this format where it already tells you like it tells you like the kind of tweet it is. That's where you see this RT at. So this RT at basically means it's, it's a retweet, right? So you might have like 10,000 of this. That means like the different 10,000 people that retweeted this would reflect here. So I also like to categorize and be like, OK, fine. I want to classify tweets according to retweets and original tweets. So one way I do that is to add an additional column, right? And I like working with patterns most times. This RT at makes me see that this is retweet, right? I see that it's repeated everywhere. So what I do is I add a column, create a conditional column and say I think Power BI makes this thing very easy. I, I've trust me, I've used Tableau. <laughs> I've used Tableau to I think I started with Tableau like learning this. And uh, compared to Power BI, I think Power BI is straightforward. So I name this some like tweets type. And I say if that text column is 
begins with because if we check the pattern, you can see that most of the text column like begins with RT at. So the reason begins with here. RT at. You have to be very specific with the term. You can see that there is a space between the RT and the at symbol. So you have to replicate that here. So we say this is retweets. Or else we'll say is um, original tweets. <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry. Now we click OK. <coughs> yeah, so this has already done that work for us. Yes, we can see that they are already classified between retweet and original tweet. Um, so let me go and do some form formatting. Now, it also depends like um, on what you're looking at, the objective for this analysis. If you're trying to see, okay, um, how many artists we have mentioned like in this hashtag because I know that okay black bones for example is inviting different artists and you might want to say oh I want to see which artist is like the most talked about on this particular thing <clears throat> text analysis requires you to be creative I don't think you need to know too much all you have to do the same way I created um I created this you can create another condition conditional column and say oh if um if oxlade is mentioned in a particular row writes you know let it return oxlade if not let it do something else right so that is that's one way to do that and it's always advisable to do as much as your data transformation in Power Query before you move to Power BI. Instead of you going into Power BI to go create like new columns, like this helps you, um, it makes your data like more efficient. It makes it more efficient. So that's one way you can look at it. So it depends on like your objective. So for I just give the example of myself looking at let's let, let me just try that and see if oxlead was mentioned we'll make it a conditional column and say uh we say oxlead mentions and we'll say if from the text column right if it contains oxlead then let's say uh, oxlead then now like i said <laughs> a lot of this twitter analysis is um you have to be creative when doing a lot of this text analysis like that's i think that's the that's the roots you have to be creative and like you have to apply a lot of your critical thinking skills now, for example, I know that, yes, we are looking at Oxlade mentions, but if you think Oxlade can be mentioned with his name, Oxlade, right, and can also be mentioned by his handle, his Twitter handle. So we know that, okay, we are still referring to the same um, Oxlade, we are still referring to the same person. So I want to find out the handle Oxlade official, right? Yes, so we add the close and say if text still contains at Oxlade official, we want it to, to still be the same Oxlade. Then for this, we say others. Then we click OK. Yes, so there we go we can categorize that. So, like I said, it depends on the objective you're looking at. Um, are there any questions in the chat, Mr. Ifrain? No, no, at the moment there are no questions. 
I'll answer the questions that came up. Okay, okay. Um, so we can proceed. Uh, I need to my date and my time really critical. So we have this created out here. So what we do is we split this. Let me duplicate first. And split. Let me see if I can get to the date time here. Oh. Splits by kilometer. See space. Mm. Let me check my region. So Yeah, so I think that, that was a problem we just solved in real time. A lot of people might experience that issue where your date is not like, like Power BI is not like automatically um, recognizing the data type. So sometimes because of the US, UK time different, um, time different time format, you can just change your regional settings and that should do. So this is date and this is time. So for this, let's say I want to make this. Um, I want to transform this to. Beginning of the hour. Yes. So we're good for now. So let's close and apply. So like I said, then whatever you're building, like your reports you're building, right? Like from here, you know, must suit your objectives. So I, if I want to see, okay, um, how many people mentioned Oxlade and the likes? That's like an example of my objective. So I try to see my Oxlade mentions, here is it? Yes, we have Oxlade mentions here. So the unique ID should be this ID string here. Then summarize. Then, um, well, let me just put the count of Oxlade mentions. Counts of this. Yeah, so for this now, I have fulfilled one of my objectives already. Uh, I can see the count of orders like um, o, um, Oxlade versus other tweets that don't mention Oxlade. So mentions of Oxlade we go with just like 55, right? Um, yeah, please let's go back to Power Query. You're supposed to clean. You're supposed to clean. So 
one way we can do that is just to filter out the words. So for example, where you have like versions of spam texts, all you just need to do is just have a list of your keywords. And we are seeing keywords like Nigeria Idol season seven here. So we can apply the text filter here already and see does not contain. Does not contain words. So we are using does not contain. Nigerian idol. And let's use does not contain which other one again. Uh, Zendaya. I don't know what Zendaya is doing in the data actually. I don't know if she's attending Black Bones concert. Yeah, so Zendaya. <clears throat> so definitely, like, there we like put a cap on that. So you can use that to also like filter out what you don't want, you know, to interfere in your data. So one other important thing is, um, yes, but this, values, something else we would want to see is like the tweets by times which is very like very important so a, a lot of people like a lot of people what what what, what they see you might say okay oh how do you do your dashboards you can create like wonderful dashboards in power bi one advantage that power bi has is your dashboard will always be interactive on like when you take the data or the visuals or whatever you've analyzed from here and move it to like a design software. What you have here is like more interactive. So we want to display our like the number of tweets we have by time. We have this. Counts this thing of this by time. So we have our month and our day. So, yes, so it's always important we, we like show our tweets by time. So how people started talking about the Black Bones Crusade. That's, I think that's the official hashtag. And we see like it gives you an overview of the data. We see that people weren't even talking about it from like February. And I think he has been, I don't know when he started promoting it with the hashtag, but we see an increase here today, which is the day of the concert. So now another thing we'd like to check is um, the tweets by type. Because we want to know, like, because I, I feel there's a difference between people just retweeting something and people having like original opinions about a particular thing. So that's where our tweet type. You want to say something? Yeah. So there's one question. So somebody just wondering, um, what if you want to identify how many times a particular post was retweeted? Is that possible? Y yes, it's kind of possible. Yeah, you can find that. You can always drill down and find it. It's possible. So I think if we have enough time, I, I should get to that place. And um, here we want to show the by tweet type legend. Yeah, so we have this. Now let's look at today's data. Today's data, you know, let me use this view. So this data for today, I just want to include this below. Let's look at 
the one for today alone. And let's check it by tweet type. So I want to drill down by where's the time? Yeah. Yeah, so we can show by time. So we see 6 a.m., 7 a.m. People start talking from like between 10 to 11 a.m. And the likes like that. So a lot of people were just retweeting. That's the thing. It's not as if people were talking about the concerts. Where you might see an increase in like original thoughts are, let's say, before, like some minutes before the concert or some hours before the concerts, during the concert, because people will be tweeting, like using the hashtag, like tweeting their own personal experiences and after the concert. So this might look normal people are just retweeting for like promotional purposes like amplifying you know trying to get to know what's happening and the likes so like i said this is just a classic example how you interpret and your methodology might differ if you are looking at uh a marketing tweets or if you're looking at the marketing trend or a research topic something else like the way you interpret it would differ because of like domain knowledge. You already know how the industry works. You know most times how people react to a particular kind of thing. So you have this, which is useful to display. So let's go back to the report. Um, I don't see by time. So let's do this. Then we have, um, let's say, you want to see tweets that have like the highest retweet or something. So there's a way I go about it. Um, if you study the data, if you study the data closely, you can see that this particular tweet right now, is retweet at retweet at retweet at is 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 the same tweet actually is the same tweet but like different people are retweeting so like the counts of this tweet right the count of this tweet will tell us like the number of retweets so how we do that is since that is the text we are going to just do like the count of the text you say text by count there's this data here. There's data here. Text by count. By count. Count. Count of this. This is like our unique um, ID. Contain count. Yeah, so we are good. So here we can see the, 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 the text, like the tweets that like has the highest retweets, right? Here. So, and basically, black bones, right? yeah, black bones followed by chocolate city. So you can always show the data point as a table. To examine it. Yeah. So you can just drill down to examine the data. So I believe that's answered the question that person was asking. Then another interesting thing we can see here. Did you see something? No, say yes, answer the question. That passes yeah. the question. So uh, another interesting thing is um, word cloud, like to have an overview. Yeah. And there's something we are going to talk about, which is very interesting. After I show this, so we want to like see the popular words. I know that a lot of things can be done with this using Python, using the likes, but I just like 
using Power BI. So I just first, okay, why go through all the whole stress and everything when you can do most things here? So if you want to see the word cloud, like the most popular words, I can use word cloud. Yeah. So it's a custom visual. You have to import it. Uh, what's wrong? My request has been blocked. Let me try it again. Yeah. So with Word Cloud, like we can have an overview. It gives us a, like it's very important like to have like an overview of like the text, what people are saying. So we put our texts into the Word Cloud. And we try to see what people are saying. So we have to customize this. But it's. We may have to put off the stop words. And. Um, let's say drill down and say the minimum number of words 50. Uh, let's say 20. So we see a lot of what people are saying, but the issue here is most times you see stop words like this A is so or and the like. So ways you can still trim it down um, still offers you the option. So you can you can have a list that excludes these words, all these stop words. You can have a custom list already. I think I downloaded one which I use most times to clean the data because is we are not interested in seeing this. We just want to know like the popular thing people are talking about. And if you can see, people are mentioning Oxlade. People are mentioning like Crusade, uh, Whiskey, and will be like why you can see breaking yoke so if you actually check you see that the name of the crusade something's breaking the yoke of love yeah yeah so that's why that's featured in the word cloud um so the stop words so i, I yes. know you guys in python there so it's a way you remove it in python so i was also wondering so in power bi so if you use so when you clicked on the stuff or they are using the work cloud, like one of the features, one of the parameters, okay. it didn't really take it off as much as maybe one yes. probably wants it so, to. So, so, so in so, Power Query, if you do mm -hmm. a find a replace and maybe you place all those to a with space, would that wouldn't really yeah. affect analysis, no? Right. So in Power Query, right? No, yes. no, something I think or, something like this. Or what? Why you if you replace it with space, it's my the what the tweets might be showing might not where you're trying to read it might not really make any sense. Yeah. Here, but but beside that, it's not really going to affect the entire the analysis. Oh. Yeah. So um um so there's a more complicated there's a more complicated version. It's not like really complicated. I found it useful. Now the thing about this word cloud is. I think guys, people need to be careful. I'll come to your points. Like you made a very brilliant point. Now, people have to be very careful about this particular word cloud in the sense that if you are having large data, data of like 10,000 rows, 
20,000. I think this particular word cloud takes like the first 2,500 rows into account and leaves the rest. I did not know. Like, it was okay. later into my journey, one day I discovered it, it, it will show you an icon somewhere here. One day I was wondering like, what is this icon for? Like, it's like an inverted exclamation mark, right? I was wondering like, what's this icon for actually? And I clicked on it and I saw um, the data, like something about the limits. I now like had to investigate and that was when I discovered that. That means some of the analysis I've been doing before basically we are skewed because it was just taking the first 2,500, right? It was is not there, taking the rest a, into a, Yeah? Is, is there a better word cloud on in the marketplace? No, nah, I think this is the know. best. I think this is the best, but one way to circumvent this is uh, you can use original tweets instead, right? Because personally, I feel why should I go with retweets? It's easier to retweet. I just want to see like people's original thought on a particular subject. Mm -hmm. Original tweets are usually few, like we saw in the data compared to retweets, right? So you yeah, might do that. Else, you can. That's the thing, you can always do it outside Power BI and bring it in, like bring your table of your results in when you are done. Do you understand? That's one way. Then another way is, like you said, the um, Power Query method. For Power Query... Yeah, what, oh, the Power Query method, you put, when you mentioned that there's a word limit, that method will still not give no. you what you want with it. Power Query, let me even tell no, you... Like, I, Hmm? No, I'm saying that if you use, if you do the power query method I wanted, the it's still, the word limit is still going to have limit an effect. Is on. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so that will not. So something very interesting is just that we, we don't have enough time. But with power query, what we can do is we can try this approach, right? We can try to, um, I, like, just like the way, if you notice how Python, I think I won't search on NLP class, natural language processing class. And I was like seeing the process of how you, no, stop the process before you actually do the word cloud. I think there are some steps you will have to take. You have to convert everything to like um, small letters. Yeah. You know, have yes, to yes, do it. Yes, when you're doing, when you're start, think, yeah, when was it Python? You have to remove stop word, you move emojis. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Remove, there are libraries you used to do all that. So there's a question. Um, yep. The only question is, would the word cloud be useful when you're trying to carry a sentiment analysis? Let's say maybe customer review. Definitely. That's right. Yeah, sometimes it's like useful. OK, the, now definitely I put on the stop words function now and try to, do you see that it's like removed like most of those things? So stop words, yeah. Um, let's see 15. So you can toggle this and see how it works. If it fits. Um, I'm coming. So here we can also like remove like the important things. Like I said, now if you check your word cloud, like things like this price, right? You might see that it's, it's something related to spam tweets, right? That people are saying, Oh, DM for price. I, I think, oh, oh, can you see this? DM, right? Yeah. Like I said, yeah. check this WhatsApp. Obviously, like WhatsApp social number, number DM yeah. for price. Yeah. You understand sometimes? So like sometimes it might not be like an accurate representation of your data. So that's why you have to be very careful with word clouds. I think so many people have written a lot of articles slandering word cloud. And I think I understand, but sometimes it's useful, right? Kind of gives you an overview, but if it do, does not match your objectives, do away with it. So there's a longer method in Power Query that I found very useful, but we don't have enough time to cover it. It requires you to think like replicate that Python steps. So you can just do um, find and replace keywords. You can split each word into a row, do a count, and group by. It's a very is a longer process, but I think that's how I f that's like. I found a way to go around it. I think what's, what's best is I'll try to do like a medium article regarding that, maybe share with you. So if there's anybody interested in that, 
I'll share it on my medium also. So I think okay. it took me a while to discover this. So for the limits in this, the, there's another thing again. Sorry. Go on. So what's the word cloud used for? You have mentioned word cloud, word cloud. So what exactly is used for? What is word cloud? What cloud? Sorry. Um, give me a moment. Sorry, just give me a moment. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, great. So the person is asking, what is word cloud useful? So we have the same word cloud, word cloud, word. We never explained exactly what word cloud is. Yeah, this is this is basically the word cloud. Like this is it here, right here. Yes. So, so use it to like, it's just like an overview of your data, like the popular words. Okay. That is it, so like popular words. And this is like, it's shaped like a cloud where it forms together. So it's like a word cloud, like to just view your popular words, right? So basically that is it. So um, another question is, so, um, you can use a com if, can we use a combination of original tweets and retweets if they fall between the limits of the 2,500 limits? It, it kind of depends on, like, like I said, methodology is different methodology is different um please can you give me a minute um i think Nep nepa has done what it does best so i have to like swap the power source a minute please okay. yeah, thanks um so bello i've, I've um those that are asking questions i've changed your role so you can't talk but yeah like what bello said what cloud is us it gives you a virtual a and virtual um position of your data your text data so you can know um keywords so you can it allies like the most popular word so that means from this data or from the trace gathered the popular ways were they were mentioned were this 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 so like someone mentioned you guys it's actually for his, your customer reviews so if you try to find out maybe what's the reviews about a restaurant you can see maybe the top words or the top suggestions that comes to mind whenever your Restaurant is being mentioned. Yeah, so I'm back. Sorry. Yeah, so can we take the next question? So the next question is. Next question is. So, so, so can any of you could. Yeah, I was talking about methodology, right? Yes, methodology. Yeah, so like I said, methodology is like um, for sometimes you might not the the, the retweets might swamp out your original. Tweet. Okay, like this now. This one, let's see if we can just do for like only only um, original tweets and see if it's a bit different. It's kind of let's see. So I want to do. Word cloud of um, sweets and text and we filter by tweet type. We say the tweet type is original. Right, so we have 229 tweets that are original. Then we now make it a word cloud. Uh, let's see. Fifteen. Yeah. So, do you see this? These two, they are like the same sets of conditions, right? Can we see them side by side? They are the same set of conditions. We restricted the word limit to like 15 counts. And we said, um, but this is original tweet and this is everything, including tweets and retweets, right? So here we can see just black bones, the crusade, please break in. Like with this original, we might like get like 
a refill of the conversation that is happening compared to retweets. So retweets might just be one popular viral tweet that has just blown up and of course it's going to skew your data. Do you, do you understand the difference? So I, I hope I hope I've been able to answer that. Any other question? No, no other question. OK, uh, OK, so I I have a quiz uh, for. For anybody. Anybody yes. that. Yes, so I'm going to ask. Uh, OK, so that's for the enterprise DNA. Yes. So Enterprise DNA is um, the sponsor of the Power BI learning community. Um, so Paul is going to ask a question and you can only ask the answer in the chat box. So put your answer and the first the, the first correct answer Paul is found. You can also give it give it a thumb up, a thumbs up. And that is going to be our winner. OK, okay. so if I wanted to if I wanted to see in Power BI, if I wanted to see, let's say, the, let me see, out of the columns we have. If I wanted to see like an artist, like the top artist that was mentioned, that's the question. That's like the brief now. If I want to say like the top artist that was mentioned or that is affiliated with this Black Bones Crusade hashtag, like what do you think are the steps I should follow? Like just make it very brief. Say, OK, number one, do this. Number two, do that. And number three, do this. So if I wanted to see like the top artists that was talked about, like the artist that was talked about the most that was going to attend Black Bones Crusade. What do I need to like look out for? Or what do I need to do to achieve the objective? Like in three simple points, I'll just say, OK, do this. Number two, put this here. Number three, do this here. Or like, yeah, three steps should be enough. So um, I hope somebody can answer that. I, I, I don't expect that you know exactly how it's how you do it, but like the process behind that, I think that's what helps with Power BI. The process behind like what you think sh you should do. So one person's step might be different from another person's step, but they might end up achieving the same objective. So it's very crucial. So what would you do? We have one answer so far. OK. Um, OK. This, this, this. Okay, so <laughs> let, let, let's go with this. Let's, let's, I think, is there any, I think most people here are correct, but definitely we'll just take the first person. Mm -hmm. so we'll just take the first person. So which answer do you think was the most correct? Because gives us a thumb, so. uh, For the first one, it says create a conditional column, put the artist name as the condition. Yeah, yeah it's wonderful, but I don't think it's complete. I don't think it's complete. The first one says select a table visual, include the artist field in the row, and uh, the ID and values. Mm, nice, nice, but there's one critical thing that is missing there. Filter your data by creating artist name in Power Query. Yeah. Um, name of the artist can be seen with what cloud? Are you sure? If you have words that are much more than the name of the artist, like 
if care is not taken, Oxlade would have disappeared from the distance just because our data is not much. If you're dealing with like 500, this thing. Yeah, so we, we have a lot of answers. But people are forgetting the first step. A lot of people are forgetting. So we'll, we'll go with the closest answer. I'll go with the closest answer. So, so I think uh, if, if I I think you have to like also assist to this because yeah, I also need you to assist with the answer because now what I would do, the first thing I would do is to create oh. a list of oh. the artists. That is the first thing I would do. I need to know the artist. I, I don't just jump into the data expecting to see the artist. Blackbones have already told us that these are the number of people that are coming. These are the people I'm inviting. Just like I did for Oxlade. I went and I chose Oxlade's name. I even went ahead and said, okay, I think people don't also use just Oxlade. They also use this handle, right? So I catered for the two things inside the analysis. So first thing you need to do is make a list of the artists that come because how would you know what you're going to use to like create your filters or create your um, conditional column? So like that was the first thing I was expecting. Um, have a list of the artists. Then any step you want to follow, uh, you do that. So um, the closest answer is This one says select this and this. Which, uh, yeah. first answer is a, so that gives a thumbs up. So if you over your your this thing, the cursor or the mouse, yeah, over I can, any, can. Yeah, I can see. Yep. There are just there are so many, there are so many brilliant answers, but unfortunately, there's one person. Yes. So I'm looking so, like somewhere that's close. But don't worry, you can go ahead with your announcement. I'll, I'll pick out the winner in the section. But I think that's all for today. That's all. Yeah, that's yeah, all. So you're, you're picking Moses as the answer. Moses is there right now. You said? He picked Moses. Not yet. Not yet. It sounds... But you can go ahead with your announcement. Don't worry. So there's no winner today. <laughs> no, no, it's not as if there are no winners. People give a lot of brilliant answers. Like find out because and I would I would also say so because my question was not like very, very specific. You understand? So you can't really say, oh, this person did not get it. Because if they had a way to explain, maybe it might be something better you get. So that's true. That's true. So, okay. so um Paul, thank you for this session. Um we learned quite a lot. Okay, so there's a question from Bello. So you can unmute yourself and talk. Um, hi, um, hi. Good evening. Um, thank you very much for this wonderful session. It's quite insightful. Um, I just wanted to check uh, based on your last question. Um, when you say we're going to have to create um, a list of the artist uh, of interest, does that mean we can create a separate table and perhaps just provide an ID for each one of them and then link the table together with your data set? And then that will help us in perhaps uh, sorting the data when we're trying to visualize. And um, the thing is, how would you connect? The question now is, how would you connect? Like, how would you define the relationship between the table? So what I was thinking was if you create a list of artists, let's say we have like about seven artists um, yeah. from the top of your head and you you probably just give like a number to them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, as yeah. the ID that uniquely identify each one of the artists. Um, mm. Then afterwards, um, you basically go back into your Power Query on your data set and perhaps um, we could actually get... Um, instances where those uh, names occur um, by the way you have sifted your data initially to get Oxglade out and then we can mm -hmm. basically just use a conditional expression to assign the IDs that we have on this new tables. I don't know, I'm just thinking from the top of my head. Yeah, I think you're getting somewhere, but I think it's, it's close. I think it's, it's possible. So if I, if I, 
Okay, let's say for me now, what, what I think, many ways I'll do this is number one, I can say, I can create a list in the table and, uh, um, or like, just like the way we created conditional columns and say, oh, Oxlade, we do this, we can replicate it for like the seven artists, or we can use DAX and say, counts, uh, we can do like count rows and do like if this row contains this. Do you understand? Like we can do a count rows. We can do a switch. We can do switch. We can say, okay, switch if or like that's the if conditional. Like if uh, this appears in, um, in the row, then that else. If this, then that else. Else if this, then that like for the multiple artists. So I'm just like exploring, that is not, that's the thing, it's not just one way. Some people might go through longer steps to achieve that. But at the end of the day, you might find tomorrow that, oh, there's a more efficient step that I can take to achieve this objective. It can be very crude. It can be very crude, right? You, you, can, you can just say, even before you load it in Excel, you, or you can just even put it in your filter and just be like, um, if the word contains so so so, it will bring out the number of rows. I mean, it definitely, it should bring out the number of rows that contains that, and you can just manually impute it into a table with um, create table. You can impute it beside the artist's name, so 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 and so so so. You understand? It can be as crude as that, but at the end, yes. of the day, just achieve your objective. That's the thing. But they are more efficient, yes. so you keep learning every day. I too. think I think your 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 approach is. Um, pretty much going to be the fastest and perhaps it will actually be resource. Um, it will not take too much resource because if I create another table, that will basically increase the size of my file. So creating a measures is actually going to be like the fastest. Thank you very much. Yep, you're welcome. Okay. So are there any other questions? So, Paul, um, thank you so much for this wonderful session. Mm -hmm. I okay. So, at the end of every session, for our first time guests, we usually ask them two questions. So, we'd just like to you to maybe give us a brief of how you started social media. How you started, like, how you got into social media data analysis. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Okay. So, um, basically. I, I did, I did, um, I studied statistics in university, studied for studying sake, actually, because I felt uh, I could have just focused on a particular field of statistics, but I did a, a whole lot of abstract statistics, which was interesting. So I came out, you know, found the digital marketing space very interesting. I've always loved social media. So when I started interning, I, I told my boss, I, I want to be on the numbers side, like I want to see numbers because I've, I watched shows. I saw how people use data to like make some decisions and do some things, very fun. So I said, I want to be on the numbers side. And I tried, managed social media, did a lot of things, content writing, but was always interested in trends and the likes. So in 2018 or 19, I got the opportunity to you know, work with a social media on a social media project. Yeah, so during the project, they gave us an Excel, a Google Sheet, right? So we were imputing data manually, we were like doing a lot of manual things. And my boss would be like, oh, Paul, can you help us get the number of so so so? And I look like, ah, how do I get this thing? Fine, the data, the sheet was small, so we could easily count. But when the shit started going bigger, I was like, there must be a way. So like that, that kind of motivation like led me to discover data analysis because I always felt there could be a way for us to get this thing fast without having to count manually and which would be more accurate. There would be a way. So I started discovering how to like use advanced functions or something. They were started using VLOOKUP, started using a lot of things. So from there, I progressed to Power BI. Like um, I learned Power BI. 
so when I saw Power BI and Tableau, like I, I just loved it. Like I just felt, yes, we could just do this data analysis thing easily. Like you have beautiful interfaces. You can have different options of visualization. So I, I, I was always looking out for the smartest way to work. Now, one thing I, I would say is, um, I found a way to apply data analysis to my work, like to what I do. So that's the thing. I just mixed social media maybe analysis, marketing, and the likes, and data analysis and match them. So I use data analysis to make me like kind of better at my work and discover new things at work. So that was how I just got into like this data analysis thing. Well, that's that's very interesting. Then what's what advice you give to just starting out? Maybe just I want to like Akade, John and all. Yeah, so for people starting out, like like I said, it's not aside social media market, like I said, you just have to find a way to it's just like saying technology, technology, technology. And some people be like Technology cannot solve all the whole problems. Like if we do tech, 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 um, who are the people that will be farmers? Who are the people that will be pepper sellers? Who are people? And I'd be like, you can apply technology to everything. That is it. So even as a pepper seller, how you apply technology when you you you, you once you start using tools like Excel to like take stock, once you start using some softwares to like record sales and the likes. Like you're using, you're applying technology to like their business as a farmer too. You're applying technology to you know farming and the likes, getting data for crops, yield and the likes. So for some people might say, oh, um, I, I don't have a place to uh, to like express my data analysis skills. I've been learning, learning to start doing. Just apply to things you around you, things you're already familiar with. Let's say you work in the you work in the local government. So it's not as if the local government will create a data office for you, right? I think I, I was serving in a local government and I found a way to apply data analysis because I just noticed that they were calculating budgets by hand, like with calculator, you know, printed um, uh, tables and the likes and they use calculator. And I felt ah, there's a system, there's a, there's a computer in this office. Why not use Excel? Will be more accurate and it will be faster. So I, I changed that process. So I applied like data analysis then to that kind of thing. So for my advice to everyone is just in your field of work, look for ways you can. It doesn't have to be big, it can be very small. But look for ways to like make improvements to process. It's not about doing like big projects like the Titanic data sets, like I said, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and the likes. Yes, that's so nice. But first, like things around you that you can use data to improve, that people can relate to it, that people can say, oh, thanks for doing this. We were able to get this insight and the likes. I think you should start from there. I think it's very, very helpful. Like this black room now is easily relatable because we know, oh, yeah, we've seen like his flyers, his events is holding around now and the likes. So you get, so that's my advice to everybody. And another thing, just keep learning, keep learning, ask questions. Um, I'm not like a guru at these things. I have a lot of people I reach out to, communities I reach out to, help me with this. What was the best way we can achieve this? And there's always a way, but you don't know it yet. So that's like the mantra, there's always a way, but you just don't know it. So just ask and you will find. So that's like my pattern. So, thank you. So Thank you so much. Um, yeah. That's what it shows. That's what it is. That's really the key to go. So um, I dropped key, um, Paul's LinkedIn and his Twitter handle so you can connect with Paul on LinkedIn and on Twitter. Yeah, feel free yeah, to reach out if you need anything. Sorry. If you're on Twitter, you have definitely come out. Definitely seen is. Like his dashboard. I think he posted one recently of the caveman. Mm -hmm. That was last month. Yes. Okay, now. So, um, thank you again, and we'll see you same time next week. Yeah. Thank you guys for sure. Have a good evening.